Yo, what's happening people? I'm Error from ErrorTheProducer.com and welcome back to the channel. This video is going to be less about music and more about how to brand yourself as a music producer with your very own website. If you're new to the channel, then please consider hitting the subscribe button and click the bell next to it too so you can be notified every time that I upload. Now with all that said, let's jump straight into it. <laughs> so in this day and age, having great sounding beats or sample packs isn't enough to achieve immediate success and a lot of the bigger producers have stressed the importance of networking and branding. One of the best ways to brand yourself as a music producer is to have your own website where you can sell products and tell your own story. Of course there's going to be some costs involved with making your own website but I think it's fair to say that in this day and age you have to be willing to spend money in order to make money. My website's hosted by Shopify, so that's the platform that I'm going to be talking about today. So before the days of website hosting services like Shopify and GoDaddy came around, you'd even need to know quite a bit about coding or hire someone in to code your website for you, but that's no longer the case. A lot of these website building platforms offer a simple drag and drop template structure, so making the website that you've always wanted is now very easy. So I'll quickly go over my website and the way that I've got it laid out, and then I'm going to build a brand new one from scratch so I can show you through the process. So at first glance, you'll see that users are greeted with an image of myself as soon as they land onto my website. This is a great tip for branding and building trust with potential customers, as I think people are more likely to purchase something off somebody they can actually see, rather than just some sort of logo or image. Underneath this image, I then have a simple and straight to the point bio that explains who I am, what I do and how long I've been doing it for. The rest of my homepage then contains links that will take you to different parts of my website as well as my YouTube channel. Across the top of my website is a menu containing different collections of products that I've put together. The All Kits tab is going to take you to a page that contains all of the products that are available on my website and then I've broke this down by sample packs as well as resources and then I have a page for patent sounds. The last thing on this menu is a link to a contact me page which is just a simple form that users can fill out and I'll receive a message to my emails. So inside the all kits section of my website you'll see that each product has its own block and once I click into one of these products you'll see a large image on the left as well as a simple description on the right hand side. This is going to explain exactly what the product is as well as list off some of the unique features. I'd say that my website is still quite basic and I am going to be spending some time to upgrade it over the next few months but for a music producer this is a great place to start. So now I'm going to be going from the beginning and building a brand new store to show you through the whole process. There are some things you're going to want to have in order before you start building your store and this is just going to help your final website look a lot more professional. The first of which is a custom domain. Having your own domain is going to make your website appear a lot more professional to potential customers and you're also going to benefit from an SEO standpoint as when people search your name on Google you're likely to show up as one of the first results. If you don't have your own custom domain then your website's going to show up as a myshopify.com link and in my opinion it just doesn't look as professional. The next thing you're going to want to have is some sort of existing branding strategy. Make sure you come into the website builder with a general idea of what you want your website to look like. Things like colours, images and page layouts are really going to determine the way that the customer feels when they're browsing your website. And of course the last thing you're going to want is some products to sell. This could be anything like beats, sample packs or even courses and merch. To sell beats from your website you're going to want a BeatStars Pro page which you can then embed onto your website but I'll go over that a bit later in the video. The best thing about using Shopify as your website builder is that you're eligible to get a free trial. First you'll just need to fill in some information about what you'll be selling and your experience as a seller. So I'm going to skip past all of this sign up stuff and get straight to the website builder. So I'm now on the Shopify homepage and to start building the store the first thing you're going to want to do is come to the online store tab. From this page you can select a theme for your store and the default theme is going to be Dawn but I'm going to change this by coming down to the explore free themes button. Once you're inside of here you can browse through all of the free themes and each one of them is going to have slightly different features. My website's built on the craft theme so I'm going to be choosing this one. To add this theme to your website you first want to click on it and then come down to this button that says add theme to library. Once you've done this you'll then see the theme on your home page and next you just want to click actions and then publish. Next we want to customise this theme so I'm just going to hit the customise button and this is going to take us to the website editor. This is going to give you some preloaded content blocks but I am going to be deleting most of these and the first thing I want to do is just change the background of the website. To do this you just want to come down and click the theme settings button. This will then open a menu on the right hand side and then you want to come into colours and then go down to background and I'm going to change this to black. As you can see doing this has made this text quite hard to read so then the next thing I'm going to do is just change the text colour to white. Now that I've made those changes I'm just going to hit save and we can start deleting some of these content blocks. 
To do this, you want to make sure that you've got the block that you want to delete selected and then you can come down to remove section. So I'm just going to do this for all of these blocks that are currently on the home page. So now that I've deleted all them blocks, all we're left with is an announcement bar, a header and a footer. The announcement bar is great for letting people know of any sales that you've got going as well as new products. The header is where you can place your logo as well as the links to all the different pages on your website. And the footer is a good place to add quick links to other websites as well as stuff like privacy policies. By default, the announcement bar is going to say welcome to our store, but I'm just going to edit this by changing this text. So I'm just going to write 50% off all sample packs. Next, I'm going to change some stuff inside the header and the first thing I'm going to do is change this basic text into my logo. To do this, you want to click the change drop down menu and then select image. Now that I've uploaded my image, you'll see that it's displayed where that text was. I like to change the position of my logo so it's in line with the rest of the entries in the header menu and you can do this by changing the position to middle left. Now I'm going to edit the contents of this header menu and to do that we first want to add some new pages. The first couple of pages that I want to set up are going to contain different collections of products so I'm going to make sure that I've saved these changes. Then I can exit the website builder and go down to the product section. Once you're inside the product section you then want to come down to collections and then you want to create a new collection. I'm going to call this first collection all packs and this is going to contain all of the different products that are on my website. The next section is going to allow you to give a description of the collection and this is going to be displayed on Google so it's a good idea to have this packed with keywords. The collection type is going to allow you to choose whether you want to manually add products or automatically add products and you're almost always going to want to choose manual. Then over on the right side you've got the option to add an image and this image is going to be displayed at the top of the collection page. So now I'm just going to hit save on these changes and then I want to add two more collections, one for drum kits and one for sample packs. So now that I've added all my collections, I'm going to come back to the online store tab and then go back into customize. Now I'm inside the header section and I'm just going to come over to the right hand side and click where it says main menu. This is going to bring up a different window and from here you want to click on the add menu item button. So the three pages that I just made are all packs, sample packs and drum kits. So I'm going to add one entry for each of those. So in this first field, I'm going to type in all packs. Then in the next field, I'm going to come down to collections and I'm going to select the collection that I just made, which is all packs. Now we can click add and this is going to be added to your home menu. So now I just want to do the same thing again, but this time I'm going to do it for sample packs. Again, I'm going to come down here and click on collections and then I can select sample packs. I don't really want the catalog entry, so I'm going to delete that one. And the last thing I'm going to do is take the contact entry and move it down to the very bottom so it's going to display on the right hand side. Make sure that you've saved these changes and then we can head back to the editor to see the changes that we've just made. So now you'll see these new entries on the main menu. Now as a music producer a lot of the products that you're going to be selling are going to be digital products and in order to sell those you're going to need an app called Digital Downloads. To download this you're going to want to exit the website builder and then from here you can come down to where it says Add Apps. Next you want to come down to the bottom and open the Shopify app store. Then just search in this field for digital downloads. The one that you're looking for is this one with the black logo. Next you want to press add app and then in the next page you want to come up to the top right and click install app. And just like that your website is now ready to sell digital products. To add a product you're going to want the digital product that you want to sell in a zipped format as well as an image to serve as the cover photo. I usually just use the artwork for the drum kit or sample pack that I'm uploading. Once you've got all those items ready, you can then come up to the product section and hit add your products. Next, you want to fill in some information about your product and this is going to be a sample pack. So I'm just going to call it my sample pack. Next, you can add a description. And again, this is going to show up on search engines. So make sure that you pack this with keywords. Next is the media section. And this is where you can add an image for your product. But bear in mind, this is not where you'll be uploading the final product. Once your image has been loaded, you can then move on to the pricing section and choose whether you want to charge tax on the product. Because we're selling digital products, it's not likely that you're going to want to track the quantity of the product, so I'm going to disable that. And we're not selling a physical product, so I'm also going to disable that. Now, because the product's not actually been added yet, I'm also going to change the product status from active to draft. We're selling a sample pack, so I'm going to change the type to audio. The vendor is your producer name. Next, you're going to want to choose the collections that you want this sample pack to go into. So I want it to go into all packs as well as sample packs. Next, you've got the option to add some tags. However, I don't do this as I feel it makes the product page look untidy. Now that we've filled in all the information, we need to actually add the product. So the first thing I'm going to do is save the changes. 
Once you've saved the changes, you'll then see that you've got this new menu at the top that says more actions. Click this and then click add digital attachment. This is going to take you to a new screen where you can upload the file. So I'm just going to select the demo sample pack and upload it. When you can see the message that says success, you can then just click the back arrow to go back to the product page and now we can preview it. So because a lot of these templates are set up to sell physical products, you'll see that we've got a materials, dimensions and care information section. So we're just going to go and remove them inside the web editor. So I'm back inside the website editor. I'm now just going to come to all packs and select that sample pack that I just made. Then I can simply come down to the materials, dimensions and care information and just click this I to disable them. Now that I've shown you how to add a product, I'm next going to show you how to embed your beat store onto your website. So the first thing you want to do is leave the web editor and then you want to come down to pages. From here, you then want to add a page. Then again, you're just going to want to fill in the name and description. So I've saved them changes and now I'm going to go back inside the web editor and head back to that main menu section. Now I'm going to click on add menu item and I'm going to name this one beat store. Now this time you want to click on pages and select that new page that you've just made. And I'm going to drag this just above the contact section. Now I'm back inside the web editor. I'm just going to head over to the beat stores page that I just made. And the first thing I want to do is get rid of this email sign up. And now we need to add a section called custom liquid. Once you've logged into your BeatStars, you first want to go to My Media and then you want to come down to Players. I've already got my Players player set up, but if you haven't, then you just want to quickly go through and set that up. Then if we scroll down a little bit, you're going to see this general embed section where you can copy this code and paste it straight into that custom liquid block that we just made. And now you'll see that my BeatStore is embedded into the BeatStore page on my website. So all that's left to do now is to add some content to the homepage and this is going to contain some links to different parts of my website as well as maybe a YouTube channel or an Instagram account. So the first thing that I want to add is an image banner and I'm going to use this to display an image of myself so it's the first thing that users see when they land on my website. Inside the image banner I'm then just going to deactivate the text and buttons. Then I'm going to come over to the right hand side where I can select my image. The next thing I'm going to add is an image with text block and this is going to direct users to a different website like YouTube or Instagram. So I've used the same image and just filled out some basic information but the most important thing is the button. So I'm going to change the button label to take me there. Next you can enter the link to your YouTube channel, Instagram or any other website in the button link section. I'm now going to add two more image with text sections and this is going to direct users to different collections of products on my website. The first thing I'm going to do is change the desktop image placement so the image comes second and there's a bit of variation. Now for this button you're going to want to come to collections and I'm going to choose all packs for this one. And the last image with text is going to be used to take users to my drum kits page. So for this button I'm going to want to come to collections and this time I'm going to choose drum kits. You could certainly add a lot more content to your homepage but for this video I'm going to leave it there. This website's now got some home screen content, some collections of products, as well as a beat store, and this is more than ready to start selling products. If you found this video useful, then make sure you smash the like button before you leave, and if you're new to the channel, then please consider hitting that subscribe button too. I've been Era, thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.